Hi, this is Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute, presenting on how to approach coronary tortuosity. Coronary tortuosity can present several challenges for percutaneous coronary intervention. It can be challenging to wire through these tortuous areas, and it can also be challenging to deliver equipment, balloons and stents, especially if there is combination of tortuosity and calcification. Also, tortuosity increases the risk for complications such as stent loss or equipment entrapment. There are three key principles for treating tortuous lesions. The first one is to get strong support to start with. The second is to wire using microcatheter with a wire and occasionally a polymer jacketed wire. And the third is to prepare the lesion very well before attempting to deliver balloons and stents. Starting with the first part, which is support, there are four key ways to obtain strong support. One is uh, attention to the basics, using guide extensions, anchoring techniques, and support catheters. In general, using longer seats provides better support. Larger guide catheters, such as 8 friends or 7 friends, give stronger support as well, especially if they are of supportive shape. For example, for the right coronary artery, we routinely use AL1 that is AMPLAST left one guides for intervention because they do provide very strong support, much more so than the JR4 guide catheter. Occasionally, one can engage the vessel deeply with the guide catheter. The classic example is that of a right coronary artery. By clocking the JR4 guide, it can dive in and provide very strong support. Other ways for obtaining support, which are very simple and with low cost, is using one or more body wires occasionally using the stiff wire or the wiggle wire for delivering equipment. The second way to improve support is to use a guide catheter extension, either the guide liner, trap liner, or Godzilla. The trap liner is um, very useful because in addition to providing extra support through deep vessel intubation, it also allows trapping and exchange of equipment such as microcatheters, which are uh, very commonly used for wiring those complex lesions. The Gaijilla is the other option for obtaining extra support. Occasionally, it is better to go with a small size guide catheter extension, such as six friends, even if eight friends guides are used, to uh, enable further deep down intubation of the vessel with less chance of traumatic injury of the vessel wall. The third technique is to do anchoring. The most commonly used one is the side branch anchor. A wire is advanced to a side branch, a balloon is advanced over this anchoring wire and inflated at 6 to 8 atmospheres, and that provides support to the guide when we're attempting to deliver balloons and stents through the lesion. Another technique which is also extremely useful for these tortuous lesions is the distal anchoring technique, in which a guide wire is advanced through the lesion followed by a second guide wire, a balloon is inflated over the first guide wire, essentially anchoring or trapping the first wire, over which then the balloons and stents are advanced. The fourth way to obtain strong support is to use a catheter support catheter, such as the multi-cross and the center cross. Those catheters have a night in a loop that uh, goes against the vessel wall and provides uh, strong support. Those catheters are most commonly used for crossing uh, chronic total occlusions. Another important component is that of aortic tortuosity. In general, long seats are advantageous, but even more so in cases with severe aortic tortuosity, such as in this case, by using this long 45 centimeter or 60 centimeter long seats, one can obtain extra support to be able to advance the guide catheters and engage the coronary vessel. The second part after obtaining good support is to wire the lesion. And the basics are that for those complex lesions, it's best to wire using a microcatheter and occasionally use a specialized polymer jacketed guide wires. The reason for using a microcatheter is first before, because it improves the handling of the wire. It is much easier to manipulate the wire through a microcatheter than without that support. Second, it allows removal of the wire and changing the tip without losing the distance we've gained. And the third thing is to allow exchange of the guide wire to a different type if the initial guide wire fails to cross the lesion. Some of the most commonly used microcatheters are the Caraval, 
the fine cross and the turnpike LP. They are all low profile microcasters that can go well to torch washing. The smaller the microcaster in general, the less chance for having pseudo lesions and straightening of the vessel and causing compromise of the flow. There are some specialized microcatheters that allow wiring through tortuosity. The classic example is the Venture, in which there is a knob on the back end of the microcatheter. The knob is rotated clockwise that turns the tip up to 90 degrees. So by doing that, the tip assumes the 90 degree configuration, which provides very good support for wiring through tortuous lesions. This is an example of a patient with a previous bypass, being graft to the PDA, and then there's a target lesion all the way to the right posterior lateral branch. To get there, we have to go through one, two, three bends. And that was accomplished by advancing the venture catheter, first go retrograde into the PDA, then, then negotiate the second turn from the PDA into the right posterior lateral, and then successfully wire the lesion, and then uh, able to successfully deliver a stand and uh, obtain a nice result. So for those bypass crafts, the venture catheter can provide very nice support to wire through tortuosity. The venture catheter is actually now on um, recall, so it's not clinically available. But an alternative is using the Supercross microcatheter, which are preset microcatheters anywhere from 45 up to 120 degree band. Those microcatheters are very similar to the venture. They're advanced uh, close to the area of the tortuosity and can help the wire negotiate those tough bands. Another option is using the dual lumen microcatheter, such as the twin pass torque. This allows wiring most commonly side branches of um, uh, the main vessel, but can be used in various types of tortuosity as well. In terms of guide wires, it is important to use a new generation, highly torqueable workhorse guide wire, such as the Sion, Sion Blue, and SUO03, which I will discuss further in detail, or the Samurai RC or the run through. But occasionally, the polymer jacketed wires are very useful. Ideally, one wants to use a non tapered wire, such as the Fielder FC or the Whisper. And uh, that allows negotiation through very tortuous coronary segments quite often. This is an example of the Sion, has the composite core construction of the tip which allows uh, good transmission of torque from the back end to the front end of the wire. The SUO 3 is uh, the softest wire available on the market, and it was designed to cross epicardial collaterals, which can be very, very tortuous. Because it is so soft, it can negotiate through some very tortuous lesions, and um, that is why it is another option for wiring through tortuosity. This is an example of a patient with significant tortuosity on the left coronary system, who also had this um, fairly tortuous right coronary artery with multiple lesions in the mid-segment. To wire through this, although it appeared to be very challenging, it was successful using a microcatheter, transit in this case, as well as, well as a whisper wire. So using a combination of microcatheter and whisper wire, we're able to wire all the way down to the right posterior descending artery. Another technique that can be very useful for wiring through tortuous lesions, especially the ones who are at more than a 90 degree angle from the main vessel, is the so-called reversed guide wire or hairpin technique, in which a polymer jacketed wire, like the Fielder FC and the Whisper, are bent about 3 cm from the tip and advanced into the guide catheter with a knuckle in the front versus the front end of the wire. Then the knuckle is pushed into the vessel, past the takeoff of the branch we want to wire, and then when the wire is withdrawn, then the knuckle essentially enters into this um, branch and achieves wiring of the branch. This is again how this is done. Wire advanced through the introducer, the wire is bent at 180 degrees, and then it's advanced into the TUI with the knuckle part in front, and this is how the wire looks like when it's exiting the guide catheter straight into the coronary artery. Another way to do this is using a dual lumen microcatheter. The wire is advanced through the over the wire lumen of the dual lumen microcatheter, and then uh, bent, advanced all the way to the lesion, and then by withdrawing the dual lumen microcatheter, the wire enters into the side branch. Here's an example. This was a CTO of the mid right coronary in which the wire crossed into this large acute marginal branch. We were unable, however, to advance it into the distal right coronary artery. So to solve the problem, we advance the knuckle all the way into the marginal, and then coming back 
the wire unraveled and enter into the distal right coronary artery. Moving on to the third part, which is delivering after the wire has been uh, uh, advanced all the way to the distal vessel, how to deliver balloons and stents. And the two key concepts here is, of course, have the support, but also prepare the lesion very well. And sometimes, if the long stents cannot be delivered, use shorter stents and newer thin, thin, thin strut stents that are more likely to deliver. This is the example from the first case that we showed you. There was significant tortuosity, and then we were able to deliver a stent by using a simple technique with a body wire. And then the body wire was removed, it was re-advanced, and eventually we were able to advance more stents and cover the lesion. Once uh, very tortuous vessels are wired, it's not uncommon to see this uh, very rugged appearance, which is actually not necessarily dissection of the problem, but may just represent straightening of the tortuosity from the guide wire. And after delivering the stents, a nice result was achieved with um, Timothy flow in the vessel. This is another example for a patient in whom delivery was very challenging. To facilitate delivery, we used an anchor balloon. This is a side branch anchor. We used the microcatheter to exchange the wire for a stiff Ironman guide wire. You can also use the mailman or the grand slam. And then also ended up using a guide catheter extension, a guide liner to deliver, and eventually a distal anchoring technique to get the stents down. So things can be very difficult, and having various techniques for extra support, that can be very, very useful for allowing a good final result. Preparation of the vessel is important, especially if there's calcification. There are many ways to prepare them, such as atherectomy, either orbital and rotational, but also use of the angioscalp and the cutting balloon. The laser can also be useful. This is especially useful in cases of uh, instant restenosis, in which uh, one can use the laser with contrast that creates those micro bubbles, can modify the plaque around the stand and enable good stand expansion. Another equipment that is not used very commonly but can be extremely useful is the wiggle wire. The wiggle wire is a unique wire that has several bands in its shaft proximal to the distal tip. And what it does is it can remove the tip of the balloon or the stand from the wall and as a result facilitate delivery of this equipment all the way um, through the lesion. So these are the three components of how to successfully treat the lesions that are very tortuous, how to get support, how to wire them, and how to deliver equipment. However, doing interventions in tortuous vessels does carry risk of complications that are very similar to the overall complications during PCI, but especially important for causing dissections, pseudo lesions, perforation, and equipment loss. This is an example of a patient who had previous coronary bypass. Diagnostic and geography demonstrated the lesion in the middle AD, distal to the touchdown of the lima. We tried to deliver a wire through microcatheter from the lima, but unfortunately that resulted in complete cessation of undergrade flow. There's of course the concern here of whether we've dissected the lima. However, upon withdrawing the wire partially, there was restoration of um, Timothy flow. And this is one component that should be appreciated, which is that when wiring through tortuous lesions, the straightening of the vessel can cause an accordioning effect and essentially even decrease the flow or completely stop the flow down the vessel. In this particular case, we did um, um, essentially dissociate delivery of equipment from imaging. We imaged from the lima, but we delivered our stents through the left main. And uh, by doing that, we did not have any issues with flow down the lima, and um, the lesion was successfully treated. So when there is cessation of flow going down tortuous vessels, such as lima grafts, then one may have to abandon the route and find alternative ways to recanalize the distal target. So in summary, there are three key techniques for treating tortuous lesions. One is to get strong support during the procedure and before the procedure. Wire using a microcatheter to have better wire handling and being able to exchange the wires and change their tips. And number three, prepare the lesion very well and use a low-profile, highly deliverable stents.